Come, Holy Spirit, come. Flow, Holy Spirit, flow. Welcome to this wet Wednesday, this day that's a little dreary, a little overcast outside, but it is bright and cheerful and warm here inside. So may the Spirit flow through your house or wherever it is that God is finding you today. Around your device, join Spirit to Spirit in this virtual community. To we continue to look at the fruits of the Spirit, those things that God gives us if we allow the Holy Spirit to be a part of our everyday life, if we pray and if we devote ourselves to allowing the Holy Spirit to guide us, these are gifts and ways that we can see that the Holy Spirit is working in us, as well as others can see that the Holy Spirit surrounds us. So today we will be looking at scriptures as we look at patience. So Anne? From Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, Paul writes these words, and it is our focus scripture. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against things like this. Considering Jesus, and that's who we follow, I've been trying to find parallels about the fruit of the Spirit mm -hmm. and what Jesus did or said. And so I found this, I think, which relates, and I think Steve will make the connections for you. It is from Matthew chapter 18. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Should I forgive as many as seven times? Jesus said, not just seven times, but rather as many as 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle accounts, they brought to him a servant who owed him 10,000 bags of gold. Because the servant didn't have enough to pay it back, the master ordered that he should be sold along with his wife and children and everything he had, and that the proceeds should be used as payment. But the servant fell down, kneeled before him, and said, Please be patient with me, and I'll pay you back. The master had compassion on that servant, released him, and forgave the loan. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to, to God. God. So as we look at patience, it is one of those things that we've often thought of as a gift. We've uh, A lot of times in the Bible we think of as the patience of Job. And uh, that's a whole interesting different study about whether Job actually had patience or whether he had faithfulness. The scripture that Anne read today talks about the fact that 7 times 70 is what we need to forgive somebody. Which in other words, we need to be patient with those who are owe us, those who have sinned, those who rub us the wrong way. Another work, way of looking at patience is to uh, be lenient, long-suffering, forbearance, perseverance, steadfastness. I've often been amazed and chuckled at the fact that a lot of people, especially when I was working with youth ministry, I had parents would be like, I don't understand how you can have so much patience with all of these kids. And of course, my response was easy. I only have to put up with them for a couple of hours and send them home. I can keep my patience that long. But I will let you know, patience is one of those gifts that I cherish, but I don't always have. Um, I especially don't have patience with myself and when I don't do what I think I should be able to do. And I often lose patience with myself. And I often lose patience, unfortunately, with my loved ones because I know that they love me. So there is part of me that says that I can be less patient with them when the truth is I should be even more patient with them. But patience truly means that we need to practice what that king practiced in that parable. That if somebody is looking for forgiveness, if somebody is looking to change, we need to be steadfast. We need to be lenient. We need to be ongoing in our dealing with them. It also has to do with how we deal with the issues in our world. We need to be patient that God will continue to work. We often wish that God would work quickly. 
the, the miracle, especially like right now with the COVID-19. I don't know how many, including myself, have prayed that they could find a vaccine tomorrow, testing it in the next day and having it fully mass produced for 7 billion people on the third day so that we can go back to doing everything 100% normal. And of course, my patients, I feel at edge a little bit when I hear the predictions that it will be January or February before the a vaccine at the earliest can be mass produced to make a difference in our world. But if I'm patient, I've been patient for uh, four months already. I can be patient and continue on to do that with God's help, not with my own. So today, as we continue to have the patience, try to have the patience, pray to God and the Spirit to give us patience. Let us look at the things around us that try our patience right now. And of course, that's um, the COVID-19. So Anne, um, you have some new numbers for us? Well, we just continue to have cases increase across the world. We are now at 13 point, well, I think this is, we were yesterday too, but we're more. 13,382,000 13, cases in the world. The United States has increased to 3.4 million and Iowa crossed the threshold and we are now at 36,036 cases in our state. We've had 759 deaths in Iowa, 136,000 in the United States, and 580,000 in the world. Muscatine had an increase of seven new cases since yesterday. Fortunately, Cedar County did not have a new case, which is nice to hear. Another unfortunate thing is hospitalizations have gone up to 190, and we are now at 35 people who are on ventilators. Those are both increases. So we continue to pray. The two-week study that I've been doing it remains the same as yesterday because we lost, we gained and lost as many uh, two weeks ago as we did yesterday. I mean, you know, in that right. two-week period. So we have 84 cases and new cases in Muscatine and 21 new cases in Cedar County. Just continue to pray. Patience is a hard thing. I don't know. I, sometimes I lose patience with what I feel people taking risks, and I don't understand why they would take such risks. And um, I often say things I probably will regret later about those kinds of people. But um, that's also part of trying to understand how difficult it is for people right now to really cope with what's going on. And so please continue as you have been in prayer and perseverance in prayer and patience in prayer. Amen. As we go into our prayer time, yesterday I did mention the fact that we want to continue to keep those who make these decisions in our prayers because it's not easy for them. Uh, they have uh, somebody put a, a post on Facebook today that was very, very telling that we need to pray for them because it doesn't matter what decision they make, somebody's going to be upset. Whether we go back to school full time or as normal or whether we do virtual learning, somebody will be mad. And I understand that. The same thing goes with the church. Back Coming back to back, person to person, uh, I know that there are people that are upset because we haven't gone back uh, in person. And I know there are people that will be upset when we go back to in person and uh, um, they'll feel left out because they won't be part of it. It is a hard way to move. And of course, for me, my guideline as that uh, should be for all of us is to love our neighbor. So we do what is most loving to our neighbor, which is the whole world. Uh, the loss of one person, the sickness of one person is not worth the ability to gather in a sanctuary covered in a mask, separated and not singing. Uh, so we need to get to that point of safety, uh, school-wise, church-wise, work-wise, community-wise, so that we can safely love one another in uh, ways that are truly meaningful. So today, as we go into prayer, keep Rick Steffens and Diane Budding in your prayers as they go through treatment. Uh, be with those that are recovering from COVID-19 and those dealing with lack of patience uh, for this world, as well as ourselves. So with all that in mind, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, Holy Spirit, I ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit upon all of us. Pour out your gifts, your blessings. Help us with our lack of patience. Help us to see what it is that other people are going through so that we can have understanding. We can be empathic. We can feel like they feel, at least for a moment, to help us to understand. 
Lord, help us to live in a way that shows your love, your joy, your peace, and your patience, so that all those around us will see in us a glimpse of you. Lord, help us to love our neighbors, whether they be going through chemotherapy or radiation and finding ways that we can support those families or protect them by allowing them to be fully isolated, to be with our community as we lean into keeping each other safe. Lord, I ask that you pour out your spirit upon our softball team, made up of multiple young ladies from our church and coached by young women of our church, that you keep them safe as they start their, uh, start their pl state playoffs today, uh, if the weather permits, but to help them to show your glory in the gifts that you've given them, as well as staying safe in their families and their friends who watch them either in person or online. But today, Lord, as we hunker down inside, out of our weather, help us to patiently wait for your advice, for your movement, your discernment through us to change this world. So today, Lord, as you pour out your spirit on us gathered wherever we're at, help us to connect spirit to spirit, soul to soul, heart to heart, so that we can feel your presence in our virtual community. So Lord, we thank you and praise you for all that you've done, all that you're going to do, and the miracles that someday we can testify to, to this world. We thank you and praise you in your precious name. Amen. Amen. As we begin to close, the question for today is a pretty obvious one when it comes to patience. Am I easily set off when things go wrong or people irritate me? Or am I able to keep a godly presence in the face of life's irritations? Godly perspective. Godly perspective. Thank you, Ann. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to look through my bifocals <laughs> at an upper screen. So keeping a godly perspective, as well as being a godly presence, um, those around us, is one of those things that I believe uh, when John Wesley... Uh, was on the trip coming back from uh, America, serving as a, uh, he was with the, uh, a friend of his and asked him how he felt and could live with the Holy Spirit. That John Wesley felt he had never experienced the Holy Spirit, never experienced these gifts uh, and that type of thing. And uh, his friend said, act as if you did have. Practice it that way, and it will come to you. And I'm paraphrasing that. But the same way with patience. If we can put an outwardly visibility to our uh, outward presence of our uh, patience, then maybe the patience will start to work inward. It doesn't mean that inside you can't be asking God to help you with those inner feelings of impatience. But if the world sees you as a patient person, then maybe they'll work on their patience or helping them to understand how to be more godly also. Just, just a thought, just a perspective. So as you go out into this world, or as you work around the house in the rain, may you find times when you can practice patience, when you can ask the Holy Spirit to give you patience. So today, remember, God loves you, Anne and I love you, and there is nothing you can do about it. Peace be with you. Peace and patience be with you.